Okay. Independent probabilities occur. We say the probabilities are independent when actually the first definition is usually this one. Probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. This means that if we know that uh, B has already occurred and it makes no difference in the probability that A occurs, that means that A doesn't care about B. A is independent of B. Okay, so the probability of A given B equals the probability of A is definition of independent events. That's equivalent to saying that the probability of A intersection B is a probability of A times the probability of B. And I thought that I had said exactly why that works, but the reason for that is, what's the probability of A given B? It's a probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. Now, if the probability of A intersection B is this, then when we do the A given B, probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B, we're going to divide this by the probability of B, and the probability of B cancels out, and we end up with just the probability of A. So, probability of A given B is just the probability of A it means exactly the same thing as probability of A intersection B equals probability of A times probability of B. Now, let's look at a couple of examples, okay? Two coins. Okay, there are two events. One event is the first coin gives you tails, and the sec this another event is the second coin gives you heads. Are these dependent or independent? Does what you get on the second coin depend on what you get on the first coin? No. Not if you flip the coins separately or don't let them uh, interact in any way. Uh, so we're going to generally say that what happens in the first flip is totally independent of what happens in the second flip. So that having a tails in the first and a heads in the second are indeed independent. Now let's see if that works out according to the formula. Okay, what's the probability of A given B? Well, probability of A given B is one half. We can see that. Um, the probability of getting tails in the first coin given that you get heads in the second. Okay, now if you get heads in the second, that means you reduce your sample space to tails, heads, and heads, heads, both with heads on the second. Okay? Now, the probability of getting tails, given that you got either tails, heads, or heads, heads, probability of tails being on the first is one out of two. One of those two events, or one other out of those two outcomes, has tails first. The probability of A, on the other hand, the probability of getting tails in the first flip is just one half. You're flipping the first coin is going to end up heads or tails. If it's a fair coin, your probability is one half. This shows that the probability of A given B and the probability of A are identical. And that's exactly your definition here of independent events. So we conclude that these two events are independent. If we flip three coins, let's consider the probabilities of, or whether the event two heads and one tail is independent of getting a heads on the third coin. Now what do you think? Do you think if we know already in advance that we get heads on the third coin, that that's going to influence whether we get two heads and one tail? Well, let's think about it. Okay, the probability of A given B uh, we say here is one half, and we can get that by listing the probabilities. That is, if we know that B has occurred, then we know that the third coin is heads, so our sample space is anything that ends in heads, which is heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, and tails, tails, heads. Now the probability of having two heads and one tail, well, those events would occur with heads, tails, heads, and tails, heads, heads. That's two out of the four, or probability of one half. We could also go to the probability definition. The point is, probability of A given B is one half. If we know that we've got heads in the third coin, the probability that we've got two heads and one tail is one half.
Now, what's the probability of A alone? The probability of getting two heads and one tail. Well, the sample space for three coins, three flips, is, uh, has eight occurrences in it, eight outcomes. Only three of those outcomes, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, and heads, heads, tails, satisfy the condition for A, so the probability of A is three out of eight. Now, this probability, probability of A given B, is not the same as probability of A. This means that the events are not independent. And let's look at an example where we select two cards from a deck with replacement. That means we select a card, note down what it was, shuffle the deck real well, and then select another card and note what that is. What's the probability that we get two face cards? Well, probability of two face cards is equal to the probability the first is a face card and the second is a face card. If we're taking cards with replacement, then the probabilities are independent. What happens on the first draw has nothing to do with what happens in the second draw. If we weren't replacing the cards, that would make a difference because we would have, if we got a face card in the first draw, we would have fewer face cards to choose from on the second draw. But since we're replacing the cards, these events are completely independent. So that the probability uh, of this and this is just the product of the two probabilities. Product that the first is a face card times the product that the second is a face card. Now, there are 13 denominations of cards of which three are face cards. The probability that the first card is a face card is therefore three out of 13 as is the probability that the second card is a face card. So that the total probability is 9 out of 169. Okay, let's see what kind of a day you're going to have. Okay, the probability that the day is sunny is going to be two-fifths. The probability that your team wins its game is two-fifths. And the probability that you're going to end a day with a good meal is four-fifths. Now let's assume that these things occur independently. That is, that your team plays equally well in the sunshine or in cloudy days, and that the good meal is prepared by somebody who doesn't know anything about sunny days or winning teams, so that these events are all independent. Okay? So we assume that these events are independent, then the probability that we're going to have a really good day, all three things are going to happen, will just be the product of the three outcomes, or the three uh, events. Okay, the two-thirds times the two-fifths times the four-fifths, or the sixteen-seventy-fifths. Okay, so there's our probability of all three of these things occurring, assuming they're independent.